For literal weeks, all anyone has been talking about are these damn skill trees, myself included mind, and while we have taken a couple short breaks to discuss the second half of this update, I've gotta ask, does anyone even bloody remember all the tweaks from the second half of this update? There are a lot of them as you can see, and most of them are pretty darn game changing, so I figured we'd take one last break and discuss them all again, yes? Yes, and we begin with the biggest mechanic out there in my opinion, the broken states of both Bright Shade and Void Gear. Yes indeed, everybody. Our new endgame equipment no longer shatters at 0% durability and instead can be repaired via the newly introduced Bright Shade and Void repair kits here. Crafted at their respective stations for very little of their respective resources, I might add, these repair kits also fully repair any equipment instantly, so that's a plus. Be mindful though, because of this tweak, we are also no longer capable of prototyping the actual equipment itself, so both the Bright Smithy and the Shadowcraft Plint Kit are forever required. Required. Make notes. As it's time to fire through the specific equipment changes, like how the Bright Shade Helmet now fully negates any attacks from Charlie, while somehow not stopping any sanity drain from the total darkness we happen to be standing in at the end of the day. But to continue, the Bright Shade Suit now holds a sneaky secret of being able to reflect a teensy tiny bit of damage back at the attacker, and when I say teensy tiny, I mean 10 points of reflection as you can see. But perhaps the most important, and still kind of saddening thing to me, is the tweak to set bonuses and that there are no longer set bonuses. If you want both a 10% increase in damage for the Bright Shade Sword and the ability to bounce the projectile of the Bright Shade Staff between 6 hostiles over the original 4, then all you need from here on out is the helmets. It's cool I guess, but I really did enjoy the thought of set bonuses being in this game. And nope, the Void Gear was not spared in this either as all of their set nonsense is gone too. We used to be able to have their sanity drains by wearing both at one time, however now, neither one drains sanity in the first place, so yeah. Clay has also done away with their abilities to counter acid rain and its effects on foodies and health, so be mindful of that, but the stuff itself still doesn't degrade while in this toxic rain, so I don't know what gives there. To continue though, the Void Robe itself takes negating sanity drains a step further by literally being able to fully negate any negative sanity aura drains in the entire flipping game, so there's that. And yes, just like the Bright Shade hat, the Void Cowl is all we need to not only see a 10% increase in the overall damage of the Reaper and its planar crap, but also its charge ability. An ability that sees its damage grow incrementally up to 6 times once per hit. Once more though, I understand why they took away the set bonuses, but can we please still add a small set bonus at some point after today? Thank you. But I digress, the Umbrella has gone and gotten one heck of an upgrade, is not not only is it still an incredibly powerful and portable umbrella capable of stopping acid rain as its main perk, but it can now be placed on the ground in order to activate an area of effect bubble that will protect against all rainfall of any type, prevent anything from under it from getting wet, and will even save any fires as well. So take advantage for sure, but do still mind the remaining sanity drain when nearby the thing. But before we wrap up the day with a crafting change that totally came out of nowhere, just note that they went and removed the sanity Sanity Drain from Dreadstone Armor 2, even though that was their whole entire deal. Now, they will still do it if either one is damaged, but still, it's kind of a little strange. As will people's brains be after an ancient guardian kill if they haven't been paying attention lately, for you see, the guy now drops an entirely new blueprint for pillar scaffolding found in the structures tab. And that's because the thing is indeed a placeable structure that's a little easier to build compared to the beta, but will still require 40 additional rocks to fully complete at the end of the day. And for the majority of people out there, such a thing is not going to matter, as chances are many won't need full protection from any type of quake, including boulders from rifts, as they won't actually be basing in the caves in the first place. But I must repeat this, if you do not want your base destroyed by boulders and or any earthquakes dropping loot atop your noggin in a wide area, then you need a pillar. There is no other way to prevent such things after today, so go get them. But about that craft change I mentioned, apparently any quote-unquote construction sites can now be hammered or deconstructed at any time in order to get back all our inserted loot, but while I have seen it work for some, it doesn't seem to mean jack for them new pillars there. I put 30 rocks in it and after all my hammerings only got 5 back. 
So I don't know what's happening there. I don't know. But there you have it, everyone. The second half of the newest skill spotlight update for Don't Stop Together officially out now. The game is bloody changing left and right lately, so I hope you've all been paying attention, but I will always be around to keep us all up to speed. Thanks for watching, folks. Well, wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.